In this image, we see a family eagerly reading a letter with news from Australia. A £100 note is enclosed with the letter, symbolising the reward for hard work or plain good fortune in the colonies. A poster advertising emigration to Australia aboard the ship Hope is on the wall next to the hearth. The name of the ship Hope is not accidental. It is one of the visual devices that presents a positive message of emigration. In the mid-19th century, over 600,000 people emigrated to Victoria. Interest in the colonies and the perceived opportunities offered there contrasted with their own circumstances which were often entrenched in hardship and lack of hope. Many left their homeland to escape a life of poverty and unemployment, to follow family and friends already settled in the colony, or for pure adventure. In the 1850s, the lure of the goldfields also attracted tens of thousands, hoping to make their fortunes. Many others responded to government assistance schemes designed to populate the colonies and to provide a labour force. For most, the motivation that underpinned emigration to Victoria was a sense of hope. This video highlights some aspects of the journey that emigrants made and what they endured during their voyage from the UK to Victoria in the mid-19th century. Once the decision to leave was made, the first step would be to find a suitable passage on a ship. Countless posters promoted voyages to Australia and advertised forthcoming voyages on named ships. Newspapers published hundreds of notices advertising upcoming voyages, promoting the virtues of the ship, the shipping line, and the captain, and the fares charged for various accommodation options. Some emigrants paid their own way, whilst others applied for one of the assisted emigrant schemes, where government or philanthropic organisations financed all or part of their passage. Once a ticket was organised, intending emigrants would then begin their preparations. Poorer emigrants with very few possessions had little to prepare. For others, property ownership may need to be settled and assets liquidated before leaving the country. Emigration agents, located at seaports and in towns throughout the country, provided a range of services for emigrants including organising the passage, providing advice on luggage and provisions, and arranging transportation of luggage to the port of departure. Preparations may include organising outfits for the voyage and purchasing supplies to take for their life in Victoria. Published emigrant guides gave emigrants advice about preparing for their journey and how to adjust to life on board the ship. They covered everything from what supplies to pack, information on shipboard life, etiquette and routines, how to engage with other passengers and hints for entertainments and pastimes. Once a passage was secured and preparations made, the emigrants would say goodbye to family and friends, perhaps having last conversations expressing their thoughts of anticipation, sadness, anxiety and excitement. As their journey began, they would take a last look at their homes and homelands. They would make their way to the port of embarkation, travelling by coach, by train or by foot, in all weathers, to one of the British ports. At the port of departure, some may be able to afford private accommodation, while others would gather and sleep at the dock, sometimes for days before departure. For the government-assisted emigrants, the emigration depot was the last gathering point before their voyage. Those with means could make their way from their shore accommodation onto the ship at the last moment and make a grand entrance. However, before it was regulated, many passengers would rush on board in a first-come, first-served manner. Several classes of ship accommodation were available, including saloon, cabin, intermediate and steerage. Some ships carried a few passengers, while others carried hundreds. First-class passengers had cabins on the poop deck and intermediate cabins were situated at the rear of the main deck. Steerage passengers, on the other hand, spent a great deal of their passage below decks in cramped, 
noisy, damp conditions below the waterline. In the 19th century Victorian era, the class system was clearly defined and adhered to on board the ship as it was on land. Depending on local conditions, a ship may depart on time or be delayed for days or even weeks. Some ships would depart from the port out to open sea, while ships departing London would sail down the River Thames before reaching the ocean. Either way, emigrants would watch their homeland gradually disappear. Shipboard routine would begin and continue for the duration of the voyage. Meals were regulated at different times through the day. The diet for steerage passengers was very plain. Second class passengers fared better with greater quantities of food, while first class passengers ate well and often dined with the ship's captain. Due to the scarcity of water, washing was allowed only once or twice a week. And because of the threat of disease and the need to keep all areas dry, passengers were required to stow their bedding each day and to clean their quarters thoroughly. Male passengers were regularly called on to clean the ship's decks and at times to assist with other duties. Passengers were encouraged by the ship's surgeons to get plenty of exercise and fresh air and music, dancing and other amusements were also promoted. Passengers regularly produced newspapers during a voyage, reporting on the weather, social events, births and deaths, lotteries, amusing incidents and items for sale. Voyages from the UK to Victoria in the mid-19th century could last up to three months or more. Ships sailed from west to east through the Southern Ocean and were mostly dependent on the strong winds encountered on the Great Circle Route. The great majority of emigrants left their homeland with a sense of hope. They experienced the voyage with all that 19th century ship travel presented, including excitement, fear, routine, danger and tragedy. On arrival at Victoria, one hopes that they carried the same sense of hope as they began their next journey into their lives in the colony.